We are live. I we are live. All right. No okay. Awesome. Um, Toby Lutke, how uh, how are you doing, man? I'm doing I'm doing okay. I, uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to hang in there and trying to make most out of some like crazy situation. I think that's yeah. the same for all of us. It is. It is, and we're we're going to want to get into how you you folks responded. But um, but for everybody who's just tuning tuning, uh, tuning in right now, I'm on with Toby, the uh, the CEO um, uh, of Shopify. Um, definitely one of the most transformational businesses in the past decade in bringing more and more companies um, into a uh, modern digital uh, business model. And um, it's an it's definitely an incredible story um, of of both you know, from just the startup standpoint um, in terms of how you kind of pivoted your way to, to building Shopify, but, um, but also um, I think it's impact on the, the world today and, and where, where things are going. So really, really appreciate you, uh, you doing this with us. Um, wanted to have a conversation around you know, how, how you guys operate, what, what you see as the, the future of work um, and ultimately your own digital transformation um, strategies that you're laying out for your, your customers. But before we get started, maybe just a couple, like, let's just do, you know, total health checks. How, how are you? How's the family? How's the company? Um, where are you at in the world? You have a, um, you have a great setup. Um, is this the real or virtual background? Where are we at right now? It's a real, it's a real background. Okay. I'm uh, somewhere between Ottawa and uh, uh, Toronto. Um, do you know and, where you are? Sorry? I, I, do you know I, where that is? I, I, I know where it is. I, 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 at some point drove here and then I basically have been going back and forth between a uh, bedroom and, and, and this, this, this office down here and okay. um, I, I haven't left much but that's um, I, uh, I, I recently actually it's funny because it's, it's a beautiful area outside of town and um, I, I recently was scrolling on Facebook and I saw a picture of this area here from 60 years ago. And I, I remember watching, uh, looking at it and it's like, oh yeah, I can't wait to go there in the summer. And then I remembered I'm actually here. I <laughs> just haven't noticed you. <laughs> you just, you just <laughs> forgotten how long you were in, uh, you were holed up. Um, There's a lot of work and uh, um, yeah, so exactly. Yeah, I, I haven't been, um, I haven't been outside of like a two block radius in the past month. So, uh, so this is, uh, this is pretty bizarre, but um Sounds like um, everybody's everybody's healthy and, and doing well. I'm I'm curious, and everybody's sort of wondering. So, um, so you have um, uh, you have a pretty intense um, uh, virtual work setup, um, and it's almost like you were built for this event. What is your what is your situation? Why do you look so good right now? What are you doing? Is this just makeup? What how does this work? Oh boy, um, uh, like yeah, uh, so. so <laughs> How do I even answer this? Um, okay, I have good camera setup. Here's, so the weirdest thing about my life, honestly, is that I get into these really strange obsessions of mine. Where, like I'm, I'm sort of an investigator sometimes. I'm just curious about something and I got really deep. And uh, I, 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 at this point, I've sort of learned to trust that um, when my interest goes somewhere, it somehow ends up playing a role one way or another later in my life. Um, the, the foundational story of Shopify is that... Um, I moved to, from Germany to Canada and, and I was um, uh, at this point really, really deep. I didn't have a lot of money, so I, I needed to spend a lot of time researching to get the right snowboard gear because in Canada you have half a year of uh, snow on the ground. So it's, you can't just wait for summer. You have to kind of do something in the winter and snowboarding was a fun thing to do. So I, I, I did all this research and then I realized, okay, well, now if I spend the last bit of my money on, on a snowboard, I, I kind of have to make more. And um, uh, because I actually didn't have a work permit, uh, I, 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 someone pointed out to me that I could start a business. And so I ended up uh, b starting a business selling snowboards um, based on this sort of research and my, my technology background. And then um, uh, started an online store, sold snowboards that actually worked really well. Um, but along the way, I, I, I then figured out that, of course, this was 2004. Uh, it was blindingly obvious that no one has actually built software for new on digital first businesses, um, which seemed really, really odd in 2004 to me because, you know, I, I thought dot com had a lot of e-commerce companies, seemed like a solved problem, but really wasn't. So I, I, I kind of built the company I wish I would have found, uh, like back then, which became Shopify. And frankly, that's still what I'm doing. The video setup though is another one of our stories. I just, I, I got, I got fascinated with um, uh, 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 like a video game YouTube streaming and these kind of things, just like sort of how we're doing now, which seemed like very niche. So I ended up 
streaming on Twitch and people told me my camera sucks and I, I looked into how to get good setup and I had all this gear which I used for like playing video games a couple of evenings and suddenly the entire world goes remote and <laughs> so, 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 just my so video we're... game obsession became what I left part of a green path of being a public company CEO or like I would never have imagined such, such a thing. The, the, the unprecedented nature of snowboarding and video games as the two most transformational things of the future of business is <laughs> like this is not what my parents told me um if you got into those two obsessions somehow you're, you're going to go build a multi-billion dollar company so, right and, and like video game uh, like actually programming was like that too for, like right. when, when we were growing up like it was like weird and interesting and uh like i no one knew that both were good jobs later on and i think it's actually kind of like it, it, it was a good example it's like the you know, the, the, the age old, like the future's already here, it's not evenly distributed yet. Well, it turns out um, uh, the, 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 the Twitch streamers had figured out how to make good video setups. And, and, and yeah, the well, rest now needs to know too. Well, it was, it's, it's definitely funny because I, um, I went from like for like 10 years being like, what are these people doing? How do you have the time? Are, it doesn't just get tiring. Why do you look so good on video while you're playing with your computer? And then now it's like, I'm basically a Twitch um, streamer, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all Twitch streamers. I, I still don't think I have the the same level of equipment as uh, as you do. But um, anyway, you look great. Um, it looks like uh, video video suiting you well. So so maybe just um, very briefly, um, it, you got into a lot of the story. But but you know when you went from having that snowboard company to going online, what was the what was the moment where you kind of started to know that holy crap, this is the future of a business. Like e commerce is all going to move to this this new model. I don't, yeah, it's a good question. It, it's I, I don't think that was a ter like a realization. I'm, I, I was like, like it seemed very very obvious just from the experience of starting the the, 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 the snowboard store. It, it was, um, I don't like to to the to the like again. I, I grew up with the internet. Like I I, I you know I'm I, I was born eighty. I the internet came to town when I was, which sounds weird, but when I was <laughs> I just in my into town. teens. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of like like a bandwagon. All, like it, it really, the local university got lit up, and uh, we got the keys to the right room. And um, uh, and uh, uh, like it was this amazing thing. So like to me, it like I I spent my teens. I, I'm sure you, I'm sure your story is very similar. Um, looking at the world about the thing that's about to happen to it, like 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 with an awareness and 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 consistently experiences that uh, said, yes, you were right. And yes, this thing is happening and this thing is getting better. And these computers are getting faster and therefore you can do these new things. So um, just looking at retail, it was blindingly obvious that uh, like we, we would go direct using the internet because the internet made everything direct and um, uh, new brands would be able to be created. And uh, so, so, so I built this, it worked really well. Like the, the snowboard business actually did very well. Um, and uh, um, financed a part of a, like building Shopify afterwards. So um, it, uh, it was, it, it sort of got confirmed and then I'm like, well, I had zero unfair advantages building a retail business. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm a programmer, um, yet I succeeded. Therefore, I think that technology is going to play a significant role in everyone else's retail operation after the people who actually know what they're doing will arrive. And uh, I should, Build, help build infrastructure because that's my job as a techie, not actually building a retail business. So that's that's how it sort of helps. So so it was actually more an aberration that you had a snowboard company than it was that you had a retail e-commerce platform. Exactly. I just was looking for something, uh, some way of making money while I'm snowboarding. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> By the yeah, yeah. way, that plan did not work out. It, this was a terrible like starting a company to have passive income. Like yeah. I, I I mean I was I've been busy over the last fifteen years. I, I barely gotten back to snowboarding. So Shopify really came out of just being a failed retail entrepreneur. Basically. <laughs> what, um, so, so as you look at the business now, you have over a million um, customers on the platform. I don't know if there's an updated stat that you're allowed to share, but, but what, what's the mix? What's the makeup? Can you tell us anything? I know last week there was this, um, there was this story about, you know, you're, you're seeing kind of, um, uh, you know, like Black Friday level traffic and, and um, uh, uh, on the platform, what's what's going on uh, at the moment? Yeah, so um, from this sort of uh, like online store origin, uh, the next thing that got really obvious is that um, uh, there, there needs to be a, like a digital center for, of, how should I say this? Like obviously a cloud 
database with your products from where you have all the information, all the facts, all the where your inventory is and all the locations. That just seemed inherently valuable. And, and that being connected to the online store is also very valuable because that's the highest velocity sales channel um, out there. So what we built from there is like, uh, like make, make this perfectly multi-channel so you can, you can connect to Instagram and sell on Instagram. And of course, uh, you, you can have a retail business as well. And we run point of sale for many, many, many uh, um, 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 small, medium businesses. And so we, we have a pretty broad view into the world of, uh, like, like of retail. Um, and um, uh, what, I mean, what we are seeing is, um, I mean, we have also a broad trend that, uh, like the, the retail industry is massive and the, the offline component of it is incredible, like trillions of dollars. And then the, um, uh, the online component was somewhere 15%, 16%, sort of going up a little bit against the full mix. What, what we are seeing right now, just because of shelter in place and all these kind of things is like retail sales, like in-person sales are of course down a lot, but um, uh, same, like uh, close proximity, uh, e-commerce is has gone up to it largely i wouldn't say completely replace it um mm. but it's uh it, it's in terms of spending it's almost just it's a channel shift that we've seen and i think that's actually there's a lot of in um I, like from what i see incorrect information out there about what's happening because people are looking at simply just physical retail as a category and, and right. proxied against all of retail spend which is just no longer true so it's actually one nuanced story that we get to see because of uh, the multi-channel nature of, 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 of Shopify. Are you seeing it, it uh, um, as like a one-to-one -one transition from the same retailers in the physical world to the digital retailers or yeah. is a new set of organizations getting ahead in this environment? How, how are you seeing that play out? Yeah, it seems it depends exactly, uh, depends entirely on preparedness. Like the, the businesses that are uh, digital and retail both, like, like um, I'll pick Allbirds as an example because they have great retail locations and and uh, but started online. Like they they see um, well, retail business like that they usually just see a shift in, in in general. I don't know about them specifically, but in general it's it's a shift. Um, if there is a vacuum because someone yeah. was only retail ex like exclusive and 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 didn't have online sales at all, which is actually fairly common in in sort of some re some luxury seg segments, for instance. Um, that there's a vacuum now, um, uh, and 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 where we see the people who were prepared to 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 just uh, grow much faster. There's a there's an enormous impetus for for even businesses which have traditionally not seen the world in a multi-channel way to now go and um, uh, uh, go direct to consumer. Um, and and we, we've seen uh, one story I, I shared before is like Heinz Ketchup, uh, which is a 151 year old company. Uh, that's never gone direct um, before, um, started in direct to consumer website for the first time in their history. And they went from, they, they did it actually in, in a week. Like the ketchup on, kind of, online? Yeah. So you wow. can buy, buy ketchup online, which oh, is incredible. Know, this yeah, is definitely worth in the future. <laughs> Who knew that that's the defining uh, moment of the decade? That, that's, uh, that's the turning point for me. When, you know, there's like a pre ketchup era and post ketchup digital era, and, and we're now in the post ketchup digital era. So I, I'm a believer. What, it's, how, it's, um, it's, a, it's a great line, especially because you can, uh, it, it's something you can bring up to people uh, when they are sort of testing the waters about this yeah. online. <laughs> and like, you know, ketchup did it. So if ketchup can do it, any business can do it. What, um, what, uh, how quickly did they get online? Um, and are you seeing like a dramatic acceleration? Because one thing that we're running into is, you know, having conversations with customers where I just know in my head the, that that normal conversation would have taken 18 months and it's happening yeah. in a week that, that they're yeah. looking to go and rapidly transform that business process. Are you seeing the same thing? I see the, exactly the same thing. Uh, Heinz, uh, like even the Heinz example, it was seven days from initial contact to life site. And, um, that's something we haven't really seen uh, at, in this segment. Um, like Shopify has a lot of new entrepreneurship, like first time entrepreneurs on it. Like there's a large segment of sort of medium sized businesses and we, we, we have a good enterprise business to, through Shopify plus as well, which it's probably has a, a, a faster sales cycle than most enterprise uh, software, partly just because it's, it's not like that. It, it, it's, it's not the Procter & Gamble. Uh, actually, why am I saying this? Because they actually are customers too. Um, 
in a way, we are thinking about it a little bit down market from like the massive deals, right. and, and 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 so it's it's gone, it's it's turned over faster. Even those are like just accelerate like crazy. Partly because you know what's going on. I like at least for our segment, for our industry, um, this crisis has uh, almost pulled 20, 30 forward in time to twenty twenty. Uh, it, no. it's, it's it's just no question that you have to be digital. You 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 have to like so. Um, I, it's an inc it's an incredibly interesting dynamic. I'm going to ask you an unfair question um, that I'm positive you're going to give me a nuanced answer for. But do you think you'd rather be an incumbent having to rapidly go digital, or would you rather be a disruptor um, right now? Um, if you if you had to be a, a, a you know move to e-commerce and, and move to a digital transaction model. I mean, I think that question it depends entirely on a balance sheet. Yeah, okay, okay, all right, all right. Give me that's the nuance answer. Okay, <laughs> it's not that nuance. It's like okay. how much money you have. Um, yeah, okay, fair point. All right, so, uh, so okay, so, so, so if you, so what, what would that, what would that change in your answer? Well, it, it's, a, it's just, it's going to be, like, it's a time of opportunity, but it's also like it's, it's going to take a while for getting return on investment, uh, presu presumably, right? Like yeah. it's, it's also much like the, 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 especially the mix on fundraising is going to be changed entirely, right? Like, um, uh, like I, I think there's fewer people raising uh, big rounds based on uh, upstream, like top funnel traction numbers right now, um, yeah. rather like, um, but you can, you can, the, the, the lending market is open to established businesses, especially to finance digital transformation, because that's very, it's, that's a very easy thing to sell to and, uh, potential lenders and investors as, as, as a good idea. So yep. I, I, I think in like the incumbency, like it's actually potentially on, uh, like either advantageous or on, 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 on totally even grounds now. Yep. Yep. I think it, I mean, definitely uh, from what we've seen is it, is it really just comes down to speed. And if you're an incumbent that can move quickly, then, then actually you have an advantage because you probably have a brand and you have a customer base and you can now transition that customer base. Um, but if, if you're a disruptor going after a very slow moving incumbent, then this is probably a great opportunity to go and, and outmaneuver the, the, the incumbent. But um, it's, um, it, it's, it's pretty amazing the kind of, of awakening this is happening across businesses. I don't know if you saw the stat today, but the uh, the Trolls um, World Tour movie um, uh, reached $100 million in direct consumer rev revenue. Um, and uh, and there's some stat like that dramatically exceeded what they did in their last film with the Trolls franchise in the theaters um, in a much shorter period of time. And so, so, you know, all these industries that were traditional holdouts of going digital for a variety of reasons um, are just realizing that out of necessity, they have to, but I think what, what will end up happening is, um, does that then become a, a long-term strategic shift when it's not even out of necessity? Yeah, and I, I, like, I mean, that genie is just never gonna go back in the bottle again. Like, I mean, the, the entire concept of a movie theater seems like really unappealing right now. It's like lock yourself in a room with a bunch of people you've never met um, uh, and uh, uh, for, for a period of time is, is, is to, to get a movie that you probably have a reasonably good setup to, to receive at home at this point. I, yeah, it's- But you get to be interesting. For, you get to overpay for popcorn though, that movie theater. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it might be reason, it might be somewhat better popcorn than you can get at home, but even better- It's actually, actually, not, actually so really I, I do want to give it, I want to give a shout out to movie theaters right now. I want to do credit where credit's due. I, I bought a pack of, of microwavable popcorn um, and I right. have not, been able to replicate a tenth of the quality of of, uh, of, of how they add butter uh, to their popcorn. So I, I do agree with you that um, uh, that is probably going to be my primary draw in the movie theaters uh, post uh, post pandemic. Perfect. I interrupted. What were you? What were you going to say? Uh, I lost my train. Yeah, sorry. I, I tend to do that to people. Sorry. Um. So so what? Um. As you think about when things you know go back to some form of normal um, as whatever that's defined by. Um, what, what do you what do you see as long term impact to to commerce to brands? Um, you, you know, there, there is this element of of a direct to consumer relationship that I think you mentioned kind of the genie's not going to go back uh, in the bottle on um, any long term trends that, that you see this, you know, just fundamentally altering, you know, if you're if you're in a board of a CPG company right now, what, what are you talking about, um, uh, about the five or 10 year strategy? Yeah, 
Um, I mean, I, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall on, in a CPG board meeting, um, uh, but it's like, I, I think the, it, it, it's just evident, like it, it's kind of plain and obvious. And I think it was reasonably before, but now it's like proven out that, that the direct consumer relationship is a key to the long-term viability of, a, like of, 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 of most product companies, right? Um, it, it, it's a it's a bit much more natural state than where we sort of got ourselves, and it's actually you, you can sort of at least in it, again in in retail you can trace how this all happened. Like the department stores were necessary to to solve a distribution challenge. There was just no other way around it, and they, they sort of took a probably a, like about a hundred year um, uh, uh, position um, uh, of strength that it like. That's created a really couple of weird dynamics. Like, for instance, like, um, like I, I think product quality in general has suffered tremendously. Uh, it's because um, at best the retailers would give you like return defect rates, but like you wouldn't actually see the products directly um, because they did they, they went to the landfill. Um, so there was like no reinforcing loop uh, on products that were sell, sold for channels. To really improve the quality, the only reinforcing loop that exists that made them more appealing for input purchase, which uh, created like pressure, downward pressure on prices and over promising on packaging, and you know like the squeaky castle that uh, is like a third of the size uh, <laughs> of the packaging because like they, someone figured out that you can do that with Photoshop and uh, like it's everything is over promising if you go for a normal sort of big box store and so so the the direct to consumer. Uh, relationship is just a lot more pure and a lot more traditional, right? It's 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 it's, it's the same relationship that the cobbler had with the person they, they made the boots for, in, in the way that you own the quality of those products. And so, I, I like a lot of people think about direct to consumer as as this sort of uh, a channel tactic, but it's actually it's 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 actually a, a return to the pre-existing uh -huh. a lot like more pure relationship that exists between makers and consumers. And so. Uh, I think that's hugely desirable uh, and, and will expose everyone to completely like new and actually better pressures on, 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 the, on, a, on a product creation. And I think why so many people are going to seek, like I want to directly buy from like these kind of stores, which put this, like I, I want the Allbirds stores, because not just because I understand the product, I understand why they're making the product, uh, because they explain it to me. They had a burning desire to make a, a product out of a certain material and found out that that is actually a good product. And now I believe that. And I know if, as long as I get them from, from, from them, it's going to be sustainable in these kind of ways. And, 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 and that relationship should exist across every industry and, 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 and vertical. And uh, I think that's what's being built up now. Well, and it's in, tell me if I'm overextending the analogy, but I think the um, the unfair advantage software companies have had for decades is, is by definition, people are using your, your service directly. And that gives you a set, a, a set of telemetry um, and data about how people are using the product and what's working, what's not working. And then, and then you just quickly go and iterate and, and the cycle time of doing product improvements and getting product, back, product feedback is hours, days, or weeks. And I would just imagine if you're an electronics maker or you make shoes or you, you sell shirts, you know, you're, you're, you're going off of months, quarters, or years for that, for that same feedback loop and through a, 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 a filter that, that is maybe not even your own direct relationship, but through other channels and, and other suppliers and, and partners. So that, that ability to have a pulse on, on what, what's going on in your customer base, what product features are working, what do you need to improve, what, how's quality, what should you iterate on? Um, is that, is that, you know, almost this, this sort of now blurring of, the digital and the physical world because you have that direct relationship. Yeah, exactly. And, and it, it, it moves from uh, the emphasis from the transactional uh, quick conversion to the long-term relationship and lifetime value uh, um, situation. And that's, that's a completely different KPI. You, you, like all, almost every decision your business makes can actually pivot on, on the question of what, are you, are you, um, are you optimizing for every individual transaction or for the lifetime value on a per customer basis? And um, I, I think we've seen this in technology. Like, I mean, so the obvious example that comes to my mind is, 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 is sort of a Microsoft situation, right? Like Microsoft got enormously big early uh, through, through an OEM deal, which also um, like made, was the best channel you could ever want. Like you had to be pre-installed with every 
computer that I think anyone wanted, right? Like, how great is that? But like, I, I, I think even the sort of veteran Microsoft people would, would agree that that really ended up meaning that the software quality suffered for a while. And I, I actually think Microsoft is probably the, uh, like, they are in the top three highest performing software companies in the world now, because I think their, their yeah. relationship has gotten a lot more direct again. And then yeah. you know this so well from, uh, from, from cloud software and software as a service, like it's it, software as a service is the, is exactly best relationship that the direct to consumer customer like merchants are now rediscovering. Like, I think we are all rediscovering a, his, a thing that everyone 200 years ago knew um, that that you want a direct relationship with the makers of the things that are um, uh, that, that 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 you use. Nothing like going back to the 1800s uh, in your digital transformation strategy. So uh, we're all the, we're all cobblers now uh, in this uh, in this digital world. But um, it is it is fair. I mean, in the enterprise world, like we're we're I mean, broadly, enterprise software was was equally late to this game because SaaS has only been growing in the past you know five to seven years or so. So it's 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 kind of like consumer internet was the pinnacle of this. Um, the Googles and the Yahoos of the world. And, and then eventually every other industry had to catch up to where the consumer internet was and everybody needed to be an Amazon or a Google um, of their, uh, of their sector. So, um, and I think we're seeing that in media, we're seeing that in, in life sciences and healthcare. I mean, the, the, there's so many different, you know, routes to market that, that, or that products kind of went through that diluted the relationship and diluted the, the quality of the product over time. Um, and it is this, this return to a direct relationship with the customer. Do you, do you see that? Um, uh, how do you see that? If, if back to if you're a CPG company or maybe even a, 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 a retailer, um, rather, do you still invest in physical? Is, there, is it a blend of physical digital and you, you just try and keep it all on the same platform so you have the same database? Or what, is that, what does that future look like where we do go back into the real world at, at some point? Yeah, I, I think it will absolutely come back because it uh, gives the best experience. Um, it, it's it's uh, it's where you can represent um, why you're making the products and the products themselves in 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 the best way, right? Like, uh, I think that's it's going to be a, a really really big factor. It's just not going. It's it's not a strategy, and like it's it's not the strategy anymore. It's, it's like a tactic. Um, um, it's it's one of your channels for the kind of people who want to shop like this. Um, and it cannot be technically separate, right? Like this is the weird yeah. thing. Like, honestly, like it, it, it's, it, it will blow your mind how many businesses have extremely fragile, uh, like once an hour, let's sync inventory from one system and another system um, uh, going on for, for, for it, it's, it's, it feels so tragic because no one would ever design like a technology world where, where that's for, like the way, because obviously that leads to all sorts of syncing issues and oversold and, and, and bad customer experiences. The only reason why that's ever existed is because somehow technologists have decided, hey, let's make one industry called point of sale software and let's make another industry called e-commerce software, uh -huh. never consulting any of the merchants. And it, it's kind of this accident of history that that ever happened. Um, and uh, so I, I, I think people understand this now. A retail store is connected by a street into the global world of commerce and, and, and streets can sometimes like not work anymore, like right now. Right. Um, and so uh, I think, I think it will, um, the, the retail strategy will take a, like a more appropriate role in sort of the way people think about their entire businesses. Um, and, and, uh, and on that, in, in terms of, as you are transitioning the strategy right now, this week you launched the shop app what what does that do for the future of commerce and maybe just 30 second soundbite on on what is that all about yeah i mean i, I try to um so the so first thing i told that after we made the decision to go remote early like uh, some in february i think or early march um uh, then when it sort of became ob like obvious to the people who would read a week over week compounding uh number in and, and sort of extrapolate what that looks like on a graph that we really had to be uh, apart for a while um I, I, I asked my teams to like, okay, let's delete all the plans we have. Uh, the planning we did was useful, but like, let's make new plans. Uh, the, the, the big edit was we, uh, we will reduce our minimum quality bar for shipping uh, products. Um, and we're gonna emphasize the things that are helpful now and uh, uh, instead of the things that are sort of done. So like 
good example of that is uh, someone uh, in, in the plus organization uh, uh, made a, a wonderful um, uh, quick so PowerPoint deck about how to set up curbside pickup uh, in a Shopify store because that ended up being a very important ingredient. And it's like, I, I mean, I, I looked at the deck and this was like default Google Slides uh, template. Um, and uh, um, uh, it was 40 pages long to which I said like, how have we produced the product that you need 40 pages to explain how to set up curbside pickup? But like, it just curbside pickup wasn't a factor. Like we didn't productize it, but at least let's ship it so people can do it, right. can help their local business, help them survive. Um, and then let's like start productizing this feature much better because it is now from now on potentially forever a, a, a major factor is local local delivery. Um, and then like a, a curbside pickup, uh, self pickup, uh, buy online pickup in store, and then maybe last mile delivery for something like DoorDash or Instacart or, or, or Uber or Rush. And um, so, so these are the kind of things we, we are trying to prioritize as fast as we can. Um, uh, the shop app is, is another example of, like of this. This is um, like the, the why behind that product is again in, in a is really funny way. Like e-commerce is like this surprisingly under-tooled environment. It's it's yes, we have an online store and maybe Shopify does this really well, um, and, and and maybe some others do as well. But like um, uh, after you order, like you get an email about it, and then maybe that email has a clickable link where you go to USPS, which sometimes up and sometimes isn't, and it tells you where this package might be. Um, and if you look at the right time, you might even know when to be home. Like, it's just like, how would you design, like from, like from first principles here, like who would design it like this? I, I know like online stores should just completely abdicate all their uh, responsibility the moment the transaction has been set. It's a kind of a crazy idea, right? But it's kind of fun because like any day of the week, you might show up and the package is there. So it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it brings a little surprise to your life. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I, 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 I ordered way too much online part of because I, I see too many good stores and, and sometimes I, I get a package and, and like I open it up and I have no idea what it is. And I, yeah. I thank my uh, uh, historic self to send my future self a gift, <laughs> just like everyone else does. But um, I, like like the shop app is just like, hey, let's tool this end to end. Like let's let's track the package. Let's tell you if you want to return it, you can do it through it. Uh, cool. If you want to buy something else from the people you have a relationship with, again, this is, helps LTV. Like, so, so all that. What we've put forward is we, we also put local, uh, uh, like discover local stores in it because uh, like we've shipped that really, really early, but like it's just really, really helpful because local business are struggling, right? Like they, yeah. they need audiences, they need to connect. And so uh, it, 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 we, we felt it was uh, uh, helpful enough, so we did it. And uh, I, I, people have been arguing about, is, is this, uh, was this executed as well as it could have? And, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's helpful. So that's-, that's I mean, you, you, you're shift. showing, you're, I think you're teaching other companies how to, how to continue to keep moving quickly in this environment, um, which brings us, to the sexiest topic of all, um, which is how you work. Um, and um, and what, what we want to learn from is any interesting best practices or, or how companies um, are staying operational. How are you keeping the drumbeat of the, the company going right now? Um, maybe just, just at a very high level, like how, how does Shopify work right now in this remote and, and distributed um, model? And um, is it do you think you're getting the same level of productivity, less productivity, more productivity, more output? How, how's that playing out? Yeah, I, I mean, it's 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 challenging and but invigorating in other ways, right? Like, I I think Shopify is one of those incredibly lucky companies that is potentially more productive right now, and I think this partly becomes of from a clarity of, of of mission. Like we we like we we set ourselves a goal that. Um, because we exist, we want more small and medium businesses to survive. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and and um, we've um, shipped at like like we, the, the teams just know exactly how they can affect this mission. Like the, the, the uh, one thing we do is we we have a capital product, and of course all capital is drying up. It's yeah. almost impossible for people to get capital right now. Although government programs are actually stepping in at a surprising rate, which is great to see. Um, but initially it was like instant dry up everywhere. So we, we actually t like moved money into the program. We've expanded it into no new countries in like 
50 days now in getting to new countries is, which is like in that world is hard to believe. Um, and uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, that's an example. Getting local shopping into in, into, into the shop app is, is is another example. Getting all the curbside things tooled up um, better and better is is another example. The way we we we, we work is I I don't know if it's different from uh, everyone else. Like I, I do have a, every morning and every uh, evening uh, check in with uh, uh, like with people I work with closest, um, you know, my uh, executive team. Um, which is just, we call it a divide and conquer meeting because we need to like divide uh, in the mornings and then figure out if we conquered anything in the evenings. Um, we have a, a company-wide pulse meeting, which is like once a month. I, I, I'm sort of considering to move that to bi-weekly just because so much of a rhythm has increased in the company. Um, but that's we're like where- doing, the, We're doing that weekly now. You're doing that weekly, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm probably slow to do that. Uh, I, I, I think, you know, just like good music, like. Like every company has a uh, sort of beats per minute. Um, and I, I, interestingly, I think if you're not, if you're not uh, intentional about the beats per minute of your company, it's going to end up being externally dictated, but mm -hmm. which really means it's going to be quarterly. Like you're going to, every meeting you'll ever get to says, okay, this ship's quarter three or quarter four. And you're like, that's 90 days. That's, that's, there's a lot of daylight here between beginning of quarter three and end of quarter three. Right. And, yep. um, uh, it's 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 uh, I, I I think that's to be resisted um, and uh, like I like the week <laughs> like I actually ask people to when they sh tell me when something ships uh, I ask them like hey which week of a, of a year because they all have numbers too yep and um, uh, trying to get that up um, I mean realistically it's hard it, I, I, do, I do I think that's a great point though because in normal you know kind of maybe peacetime quarter is your increment and um and uh but yeah we should be we should be top, yeah it should be you know week 17 um yeah is exactly important. and there's a lot of really 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 good songs which actually got massively improved once someone uh just re-recorded them in higher bpm right like and, and i think shopify is one of those um so so this is uh, uh, i think the lesson here is um we need to all operate like edm music right now <laughs> And I, 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 no, no complaints from me. That, that, yeah, that works yeah, but, yeah. but I, I think so. It sounds like you're. I mean, especially with that divide and conquer meeting, um, a very agile approach to running the whole business, which is you know daily standups, but not just in software, but in all operations across the company. Quick check-ins, align with the company. That 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 seems to be what's coming together right now. Yeah, one, one book which has inspired Shopify significantly when it came out was uh, Team of Teams by General uh, uh, um, Stanley McChrystal. Um, and um, uh, I, like, I, I think the ideas of that book have filtered through many channels to many people now. Um, so it's, it's, I don't think it's an exclusive place to get them. But um, the basic yep. idea is like run a very, very uh, distributed organization um, that's uh, which can work if you have a pretty high bandwidth uh, uh, communication culture, um, yep. and uh, so so like speed is going to end up being dictated by the by the speed by which information travels, uh, and, and and so this is why we uh, decide to like get together daily and and then really get those uh, uh, what, what, what those rhythms. Now I I would also say like just like ob observation like just not having to travel like Shopify like our city where we found it is like a million people city so. It was never that deep a talent pool to have a, a company of our size there. Like, I mean, maybe, but like it would have been difficult. So we, we, we started more offices fairly early. And so um, uh, that just required a good deal of travel and, uh, you know, go, okay, now go to Toronto, Montreal, uh, Berlin, and so on. Um, just not being able to do this is oh, actually cool. working amazingly yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, oh, that, that's, that's, th I mean, you know, collectively across a company, maybe hundreds of thousands of hours a year that, that your company's just on, on airplanes and whatnot. Traveling. Yeah. What, um, I, I think there's some things you're learning from that as well. Um, what? Yeah. I mean, is it, is it necessary, right? Like, uh, so the, the thing, like, I, so there's nothing in the world that can beat a small committed uh, aligned team of maybe like eight people or so like max six to eight, right? I, maybe five to eight, something like this. Um, that's, that's just the 
the unit of most productivity that I've, at least in my entire experience. Yep. So if they are all in the same room, it's like, like you cannot compete with that in any other shape or form. Um, but if that team of eight amazingly committed, highly aligned people is distributed amongst two offices, um, it's a different kind of situation because like suddenly the sort of proximity osmosis doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. If like a few of them are working from home, it's also a completely different situation. Uh, well, the thing I'm thinking a lot about is like, if, if you would stack rank this and say, okay, proximity, align team here. And then uh, up until recently, I would have put uh, two location proximity teams on number two. And then three is like a couple of people are actually some, uh, remotely and might be in different time zones. Where is an all remote team? Is that in, that, yeah, like it's not right. one, but it might be number two. Well, and so, well, well and, and, or the question is, is could it be number one because the practices you, you adopt um, enforce a greater degree of communication than the stuff you take for granted because you think you're right next to the person. So, um, I mean, is there, is there a chance that that could compete with, with, with number one, but just on a, you just have to, you know, use a different set of, of, work practices to, to enable that. Yeah, and I think for one other thing we should realize is like, like there's a very, like a, a reality around uh, like parenting and so on, which is massively confounding right now. But yes. outside of that, um, it's, uh, this is the worst version of everyone working remotely will ever have for the rest of human history. <laughs> because literally, like just like how we grew up with technology and we could reason around using technology around the challenges like retail, uh, you know, or sh file sharing and, uh, and, 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 and corporate co collaboration. Um, uh, this is the situation everyone's in now, right? Right. Like it's, 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 everyone has a working understanding of this and especially the people who are building the tools will uh, have a better understanding about what's needed from, from these tools, right? Like, yes, if you have a video call, we can all hop on, um, right now if we if we just want to sort of replicate the like hey we are all sort of sitting close by and sometimes you check in with someone like that's harder right now it's yeah. sort of you can do it for text but like like there's some massive innovation that's going to happen which makes all of what we are experiencing right now uh maybe not 10 times better but maybe twice as good which is also a factor in, yeah. in this calculation well and t totally the, the probably the all of the tools that fully you know, enable this way of working have not even been built yet. And so we don't even know what, what this can turn into. And, and you're right that the, maybe this, the kind of um, casual serendipity of the office is, has gone down a bit um, to be made up for by extreme, you know, alignment and improved communication across companies and the ability to, to hop into to meetings much more quickly, you know, take up less of your time of your day on travel. And so, it's an interesting, like I think what, what we at least experienced was the initial shift was maybe for the first two weeks, it was like, okay, how do we go replicate the in-office experience virtually? And then we were like, like, screw that. No, let, let's take advantage of the virtual way of working in all of its improved qualities and not try and replicate something that we're not going to be able to achieve, you know, without the physical proximity. But but now let's let's actually just benefit from this new way of a new style of working. But were you... Um, but just for those that are wondering, especially anybody in retail and CPG and, and some of the industries that, that you serve, um, uh, how much of your business was already in the cloud? I mean, what's the what was the level of, of kind of IT um, that, that was already, you know, best of breed cloud apps that you run the business on? What, what was the structure there? Yeah, yeah uh, like, I mean, Shopify is like embarrassingly modern internally, uh, we, we sometimes call it, which, which sometimes is actually problematic, but like we, we, we were just lucky. We didn't, we never had a local privileged network. Um, we never had, uh, like we never had a server in, in a local area network or something like this. So, um, which was really, really difficult back in the day, like in a, in a like middle last decade. <laughs> um, but uh, now it's like trivial because of all the amazing tooling that has happened. And so we, we didn't really, like it, it was fairly natural for us to uh, to work together, and also because of our like we, we just know more about multi office collaboration, and so video setups had to be really good already. And uh, it, it, it again we we got lucky, uh, so we were, we were reasonably prepared for it uh, as much as anyone can hope to be. Um, uh, 
Uh, but yeah, it, it's 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 been interesting. Even on the executive team, most executives are like in 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 Ottawa, but uh, uh, like uh, a few, like specifically one, has been always in Toronto. And um, now we are. It's it's different to just collaborate with him. It's because it's just it's uh, uh, we are all kind of right. You're on the same. Yeah, like everyone has their own picture in Zoom, right? Like yep. it's. It, that's a, such a weird dynamic. Previously, there was a room with usually like six, seven, eight of us, and and Who one person. Got the best chair, and and yeah. <laughs> exactly. And now, now we're all a square to each other. <laughs> so it, it, it's I like I think like we have all the privilege and uh, to be in good enough situations that we can see something like a like 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 something which is a humanitarian tragedy. Uh, we, we, we can sort of look past this and 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 run some experimentation um, that might be hopefully useful in the future. Like I I, I sadly did not become a doctor uh, and or, or a nurse and be able to work on the front lines of w where the real important work happens. But um, uh, I I think we, there's a couple of things we can do. Like uh, specifically, I, I again we we are, we are we are trying to lessen the economic impact uh, uh, on people by ho helping to get more of these small businesses to survive. But there is really also like us who have a little bit of mental capacity should really think about how can we set up better technology for these kind of situations, help everyone else. You know, it's going to be a crazy world to go back into. And I don't even know if going back into is actually the right frame of mind. It's like we're going forward into something else entirely. Um, and uh, it's like, we, like at the very least we're going to go back into a world where literally everyone who is has anything to do with corporate life has a functioning understanding about what it's like to work digitally together um but like that situation alone like just the fact that no one in the boardroom is the kind of person who gets their emails printed out yeah. just means like that 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 decisions will just flow differently right and i think that's going to be meaningfully uh impactful yeah, we're we're seeing a lot of customers um, uh, that are that you know they they thought that their digital transformation strategy was you know going to be blockchain and AI and these really super powerful things, and then they realized that they still had paper um, that they required from their clients to be able to process you know a, a transaction, and they're saying, holy shit, you know we we spent all of this time on the wrong thing. And it's really just about how do you make employees productive, be able to work digitally, be able to serve customers digitally. And that is the new era that we're entering where you're gonna have a different level of fluency with these technologies. Everybody's gonna be able to hop on a video call. Um, hopefully it changes sort of business meetings and travel. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's a lot to look forward to on that front. I mean, you know, the impact you could have with telemedicine, the impact you can have with, um, with more small businesses being able to reach customers globally through, through Shopify. Um, there's, there's definitely, you know, in this, in this very, very difficult event, there are some, some bright spots that will be, you know, interesting to extrapolate from. I totally agree. I couldn't agree more. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's just going to be fascinating to see. Yeah. Well, Toby, um, I appreciate the time today and, um, uh, thank you for giving us a little bit of a glimpse into, uh, to what the future of business and work might look like. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, thank you for uh, all of the, the Shopify uh, users that use Box. Um, so we, we appreciate that. And um, let us know if there's anything we can uh, um, do to help you guys more. And um, on behalf of um, multiple friends that uh, have Shopify um, as their uh, retail platform, I, I do want to give a good shout out. I have a friend who has an online balloon website um, through Shopify. And you're, uh, you're the reason that he can exist and sell balloons online. So, uh, um, so you, you have... <laughs> more use cases than you even ever imagined um, happening on the, on the Shopify platform. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This has been fun. Cool. Thanks, Toby. Take care. Cheers. Bye.